Hey guys, Maxman RC coming at you. And yes, I know I'm wearing the same shirt. Why am I wearing the same shirt? Because I'm making these videos back to back. Why am I making these videos back back to back? Because I got injured. We're gonna leave everything at that, all right? All right, let's get to it. Today, I'm doing a video on something that I promised you guys that I would do a few weeks ago, but life came in the way and then I got injured. So let's go ahead and take care of this video now. We are not doing a ground vehicle today. No, 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 no. Today, what are we doing today? Well, let me show you what we're doing today. Ah, uh, yeah, ready! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we are doing an air RC video. Woo! Look at this thing go. Now, what is this thing? You might be asking ya. Well, besides the fact that I'm not gonna be a smart aleck and say, oh, it's a helicopter. We all know that. It's a little RC helicopter. I just said it. Anyway, so what is this? Well, let's bring it in for a landing and we can get, uh, get, get to it, shall we? Yes, sir. Look at this. All righty. Let's go ahead and power it off for the time being. And I'm going to back you guys up a little bit. Personal space, people. Personal space. So what do we have here? Well, this here and i'm gonna look at my cheap uh and my uh cheat sheets right here right this right here is the drc de 51 rc helicopter it is 2.4 gigs it's not like those um we'll get into that in a second so it's a 2.4 gigs helicopter you can have a couple of these guys running at the same time without any issues of uh you know Without any issues. Let's just leave it at that. I'm taking meds, like I said in my last video, and my brain is not working properly. All right, so we're going. We're going to deal with that. So this helicopter retails at this moment. We are in January 23rd. At this very day, this helicopter is sitting on Amazon for $32.97. I'll put the link at the bottom. All right. So this little heli is a, like I mentioned, it's a 2.4 gig remote control helicopter. 3.5 channel now to give you guys an idea most ground vehicles are two channels forwards backwards left and right okay two channels rc helicopters or planes or drones or whatever the case they're usually anywhere between 3.5 to four channels to six channels but we're going to get into that later on okay uh most of the drones out there are four channel drones up down forward backward left right give me a second all right sorry about that my phone was about to die i had to put it on a charger yes i'm using a phone uh and no it's uh, you know what? i'm not gonna get into that so point being is what do i have here like i was saying this is a 3.4 3.5 channel 2.4 gigs rc helicopter by drc now i do have some other drc stuff around the house other um rcs and they're actually pretty pretty legitimate i <laughs> again maximum rc your budget friendly hobbyist uh what else is there to say so you want to get started into uh into flying it could be a helicopter it could be a plane or whatever honestly one of the best ways you can get started is probably with Yeah, I'm going to go with, with a 3.5 channel helicopter. It'll give you the basic ideas as to how to fly. All right. It'll have up, down, forward, backward. Up, down, forward, backward, and spin. That's the other one. Yeah. Up, down, forward, backward, and spin. Three channels. There it is. Uh... I'm not going to get into the scientific, for lack of a better term, point of this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I was saying, most of your air vehicles are anywhere between 3.5 channels to 4 channel, which is most drones, to 6 channels, to 5. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The more channels, the more, th the more things the RC can do. This one's a 3.5 channel. I'd like to think that basically up, down, forward, backward. And spins okay just your basic stuff 
and that's more than enough to get you started on running. Now this guy, I do believe, and now I'm gonna check my cheat sheets here. If I don't end up dropping the cheap sheets. Cheat sheets. <laughs> uh, okay, so it does have altitude hold, one key takeoff and landing, along with the emergency stop. And we're gonna look into that real quickly too. And two speeds, uh, slow and a little bit of faster. Uh, it does have, it does come ready to fly. Two batteries. I believe these are lithium ion. I don't believe they're actual lipos, but the point is that they're good enough. They will do for it. It does include a USB charger, which I have found is the best way to charge these things. They charge recently, pretty, pretty decently quick. I think it took me about two hours, maybe an hour to charge uh, both of them, which really isn't that bad. Uh, it does come with two colored canopies, which are these guys right here, the plastics. It does come with this one that I have, the blue, and it does come with one with red instead of the blue glass on it. Uh, like I was saying, it is a 2.4 gigs, altitude hold, one key land, one key uh, takeoff, uh, includes the two batteries, two speeds, LED lights, and gyroscope. What is gyroscope? To put it simply, it keeps the heli flying level. That's the easiest way to put it. Uh, if you know into drift carts, a gyroscope usually, not even drift carts, any other RC car nowadays usually includes some form of it. I think Arma calls it AVC, automatic vehicle control or something along those lines. Point is basically it keeps a heli or it keeps whatever vehicle stable and straight. Now, like I said, this one's sitting right now on Amazon for $32.97. Uh, so let's take a quick look. Yeah, lithium. Oh, they're actual lipo batteries. According to this, they're actually lipo batteries. It does take about an hour to charge the batteries. Again, it's not that bad. And each battery will give you anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes of flight time. I've been able to fly this thing with both batteries for almost a good 45 to an hour, which actually is not bad at all. <sighs> let's get into this real quickly, shall we? So, the heli itself, blades are made of plastic, but they're flexible enough so that in case you have an accident or a crash, it's really not going to damage anything on the heli itself. The heli body is actual aluminum, so it'll be, e it'll be able to withstand uh, any kind of hits that you give it. All right. Now, how do you know this thing's a 3.5 channel? It's usually because the rear tail rotor instead of actually being sideways like on an actual helicopter is facing up what does this do it actually help uh, this is actually was going to make the heli go forward and backwards usually uh four channel helicopters or real life helicopters have i believe it's called a swash plate on the front rotors and it only has one rotor on the, t on the front these are coax rotors one spins one way the other spins the other way this helps with the heli with the motor torques and that's also why uh, four channel and real helicopters have the uh, the rear tail rotor facing, you know, like a regular fan facing like this, because this actually fights against the torque of the motor. And that's how the helis also help turn. They either increase or they lower the power on the rear rotor when it's actually standing up. Don't quote me on this. If I'm wrong, please comment down below. Uh, Anywho, so basically, like I said, this is a coax helicopter, two rotors, two main rotor blades, one spinning clockwise, the other one spinning counterclockwise. That helps with the with the motor torque so that the helicopter will actually stay put. If you only had one rotor and one tail rotor like the way it's sitting right now, your heli would just be spinning sideways. With this guy, one shaft is inside the other shaft all the way up when one spins and the heli wants to go the other way, the other one spinning will counterbalance that torque and will keep the helicopter steady. This is the reason why these 3.5 channels, especially the coax helicopters, are so easy to fly. They're basically doing everything for you. All you're doing is going up, down, and forward, and back. And to spin it, you just spin it. And the way that that works, like I said, 
they lower the speeds on one of the other two rotors. If you're spinning, le if you're spinning left, it'll lower the speed on, let's say, the bottom rotor. And if you are spinning right, it'll lower the speed on the top rotor. Again, don't quote me on this. It's been a while since I've flown these things, all right? And most of the helis that I have are actual four-channel helicopters, which will go up, down, forward, backward, spin, spin, and sideways. Like in that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Basically like a drone. So, I bring. why am I bringing up drones? If you're able to fly one of these, flying a drone would be simple. And I'm not talking flying one, a drone that has all the bells and whistles like DJI's. All right? No, no, no. I'm talking actual quads. The drones that don't have GPS hold. The drones that don't have uh, altitude hold. I'm talking the toy grade drones and even not toy grade, maybe hobby grade drones that don't have any of those flashy bells and whistles because let's face it and one thing that i've said and i've always said about drones and one thing i learned about uh that company that i mentioned a little bit earlier about drones all those bells and whistles are great when up to when they fail it's not an if they will fail it's when they will i had a vision to pro or plus whatever the hell it was called and that thing was flying perfectly fine one, at one point. Perfectly fine. Not an issue. And then all of a sudden, it lost the GPS system or it lost something like that. And it was flying away from me. It was trying to come back to the home point. But for some reason, I thought the home point was away from me. Back in those days, you were able to shut off all those switches. And uh, or I'm, I don't remember if that's how I had set up. Shut off all those switches and fly the drone manually without any of those bells and whistles and guess what happened i was able to bring the drone back land it right in front of me nothing happened if i would have rela relied on all those bells and whistles that drone would have been lost it would could have hurt somebody could have damaged property point is if you're going to fly anything learn your best to fly it manually because believe me the autopilots on these things they're great but they will fail at one point or another. And enough looking at my ugly face. Let's take a look at this thing. So, like I mentioned, metal body, flexible blades, which is actually really nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the function, shall we? Like in any other RC, I'm gonna leave this battery. I've been flying it for a little bit. I'm not sure how long the battery has uh, will last, but I do have the second battery. Any other RC, turn on the, the motor for other uh, motor. <laughs> Turn on the radio first. All right. Now, the way that this radio works, all these buttons actually work. They actually do something. All right. They're actually clickable and they all have a feature. They all have something to do. So it's not like a fake, fake buttons. No, no, no. They all have something to do. Now, this one runs on, I believe, triple A's. What is going on outside? My my security camera just keep catching things. <sighs> People don't know how to drive. Let's put it that way. Anyway, I digress. Okay, let's put the phone away so you guys can stop hearing the vibrating. This thing runs on, I want to say, three. Yeah, three AAA batteries. All right. The drone runs on a LiPo. Or so they state. Honestly, I still think in their, uh, their polymer. Not a... Uh, not polymer. Anyway. I'm sorry. I know this video isn't going to be great. And I have sincerely. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Ion. That's the thing I was thinking. Lithium ion. These things are supposed to be lithium polymer. Lipos. Anyway. So. Looking. Holding the remote to you. Okay. Up and down. That's all that this one does. All right. That's the left joystick. The right joystick, forward, back, spin to the right, spin to the left. With the four channel helis, this one, this joystick would also basically spin anyway, but no, because this thing's a 3.5 channel, just up and down. That's all this one is. It's just for land, uh, takeoff and landing, takeoff and landing, and just to be able to fix it. Top button, 
takeoff, bottom button, landing. This one, I believe it's for the lights. You can actually shut off the lights. And this one is for the speeds. And these guys right here are your trim for... These are your trim buttons, uh, again. Yeah. And you do have two more buttons up here, which also are your trim buttons, if I remember correctly. So, let's see it in action, shall we? Like every, like any other remote control car, radio control car, always, 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 that hurt my foot. Anyway, always radio remote on first. Once that is on, power up the helicopter. It does have a small switch right there. Click it on. Your LEDs will turn on. They'll start blinking. It's looking to pair. All you're going to do to pair is you're going to grab the left um, joystick up, down, and there it is, paired. Alrighty, take off. You're going to press the top button. And let me bring you guys down here. All right, I'll bring you guys closer as well. Okay, so take off, you're gonna press the top button. And that's all you gotta do. And as you can see, I'm not holding, uh, I'm not holding the left uh, joystick to go up or down. It's doing it by itself. It's holding its own position. Oh, lights are blinking together. What that means is that this battery is pretty much next to done. So we'll bring it, let's go on ahead and land it. And like I said, to land it, you just press the second button on the left. Nice, soft landing. Let's go on ahead and change the battery and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, to change the battery, we're going to shut off the helicopter. I'm going to go to the bottom, to the belly of it. This is where the battery actually goes. You're going to grab it from the back. And all you're going to do is just one good pull. There you go. There's battery number one. Going to put the next battery in. You want to see how it goes. It does go one specific way. And they were smart enough, the company was smart enough to actually... Make it fit just one way. So we're just going to go on ahead and place it into this little cage that it has. I'm going to go on ahead and place it in there. You're going to watch the antenna. Okay. And all you're going to do is you're going to click it in. Nice and tight. Okay. You're going to make sure that everything's connected. It goes into that little red connection right there. Everything is. So now we're going to go back, turn on the remote, turn on the, fre the heli with the fresh battery, and let's pair them again. Like I said, the left joystick up and down. Everything stops blinking on the remote. These guys are blinking properly. Let's put it back down. Oh, my leg. Oh, my leg. Oh, my leg. <sighs> All right. So I put it down a little closer than I should have been, and luckily you guys don't need to see the the ceiling that much so like i had mentioned one key takeoff press it off it goes nice and simple once it gets to a specific height which apparently i will have to bring you guys up a little bit there you go once it gets to a specific height you do have you know it'll stop by itself and as you can see all you gotta do It'll, it'll fly by itself without an issue. All you have to do is just maneuver with the right joystick which way you want it to go. Okay. Now let's bring it back a little bit. Let's show you the speeds. Okay, and it'll give you a beep. Two, that means it's that's going to be the fast speed.
overall it's pretty quick for what it is and again i'm not touching this joystick at all okay we press it again one beep that's gonna be the slow speed but you can see it's a little more easier to control with just the slow speed There you go. Hopefully you guys get a better view like that. Alright. Now, the one key landing is the bottom button. You click it. Nice soft landing. You're done. It's all over. Pick it up. Shut it off. And you're good to go. Now, like I mentioned, it does have emergency stop function the problem with that is i shouldn't say the problem the thing with the emergency one is once you click it everything shuts off automatically and this thing's going to come crashing to the ground i'll show you this i'm so confident in the way that this helicopter is built that i know for a fact nothing will break and i'll prove that to you so we'll do the one key takeoff you know you're flying you're having fun blah 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 Go a little bit higher here. Okay, now how about the emergency stop function? I wanna make sure it's actually gonna be in the frame. You're just gonna press and hold the automatic landing. Done. It's done and over with. Now, I'm gonna go on ahead and show you. If y'all ever damage your foot, I feel for y'all. I hate this boot. Okay, let's bring the heli back. Oof. Look at that. Absolutely no damage. We can definitely put it back down and it's going to keep flying like as if nothing happened. Ah, push it back a little bit more. Okay, sorry guys. Little technical difficulties here. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, what if you crash into a wall or something? Just take it off, take off. We're going to do the fast speed. There you go. Now let's fly. Now as you can see, the rear propeller is not spinning unless I'm putting in an input on the radio. Rear propeller is stable. It's set. It's not to move. If I go forward, it'll start spinning. If I go back, it'll start spinning. Otherwise, it's static. It does not move at all. But like I said, let's go on ahead and before the battery dies. Not that it will. This thing lasts a good minute, a good amount of time. Let's go on ahead and uh, again, I'm so confident in this thing. I know nothing's going to happen to it. Let's go up high a little bit. We're just going to run straight into the closet doors. Full speed. Okay. Finally came to an end. And that's what I wanted to see. It finally went into emergency mode after all those hits. But what I want to show to y'all is how it actually is able to withstand all this. By the way, anytime you're going to pick up anything with spinning blades, make sure you pick it up from the bottom because you never know if those blades are going to turn back on. Okay. So we got the helicopter back. And once again, absolutely zero damage to it. And the blinking just states it's either low battery, which I doubt it is, or that it was just emergency stop. So we're just going to reset the helicopter. This is probably the only downside of it. I'm playing with the remote, just getting this thing set up. So let's go ahead and place it back down. 
absolutely, like I mentioned, no damage to the heli in any way, shape, or form. Oh, look at that thing go. It just wants to, see, it just basically reset itself. There it is. Like nothing. Now, let's grab this guy. We're going to do the same thing, and I'm, I'm going to try and follow the heli this time, okay? Again, this is how confident I am in this helicopter. Seriously. Let's bring it back. Now, I'm sorry, I'm doing, I'm removing the remote with one hand, so. Okay, and let's go again, full speed into the doors. See that? Like nothing. That's how good this heli really is. I'm doing my best to keep it in frame. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so now let's go on ahead and land it. See if it'll hit the chairs. Nope. All right. Okay, so you guys know I usually don't push these things to the limits. The RCs in general. I don't try to break them because that's that's not who I am, all right? I do like to see how much of a limit they can take. And I think that's as much as I'm going to test this because, I mean, honestly, that's enough to scare. If you're getting this for a low kit, I'm sorry, excuse me. If you're getting this for a low kit, that's enough to scare the crowd out of him. Uh... Otherwise, let's take a look at it once more. And like I said, the top button right here, this one, two, the third button actually shuts off those lights. Let me go on ahead and shut off the lights to the, to the room right here. And I can show you what I mean, okay? Uh. Okay. So there you go, flying with the lights on. We press that second button. Dark mode. Lights are completely off. So this thing you can fly in a dark room. Now, would you be able to fly it outside in the street? Yes, but with very, very minimal wind. I would definitely not suggest flying this. I mean, if you want to fly it outside, be my guest. It is strong enough. I have done it. But it is very lightweight. So any little bit of gust of wind will be able to take the heli for a ride as well. Now this thing is so stable that I'm, I'm completely comfortable where I'm sitting right now and I'm not worried about this thing hitting me in the face. And keep in mind too that uh, uh, that even though it's flying basically straight at me, I mean it's really, it's really not, it's not bad at all, period. That's all there is to it, it's not bad at all. So I'll give you guys a little minute here so you can see it flying. Uh oh, it looks like the battery is pretty much done. Now keep in mind the batteries do last a little bit longer, but I did kind of push it more than I should have. Overall though, honestly, for the under $40 price tag of this heli, it is definitely worth picking one up. It's a perfect starter heli for anybody that wants to get into, into flying. 
very easy to fly, very easy to maneuver. Granted, you won't be able to do any tricks on it because it's not a 3D helicopter. And we'll get to those 3D helicopters later on. But it's more than enough to be able to get in the air and just have a little fun. It really is. Um, that's about it, guys. I'll go on ahead and leave you with the heli flying. This was Mexman RC, your budget-friendly RC hobbyist. Ground or air, and it's losing power as we go. Enjoy the rest of your night.